Hey, what's up, Facebook? This is Jacob Wolfman, and I'm testing out the new live stream feature on Facebook with a little show. I'm calling it Live with Wolfman. So we'll see how it turns out. Um, I'm just here to have some fun, and uh, I'm going to try to structure my live feed so that it's kind of uh, useful to you and you don't want to tune out. So basically what I'm going to be talking about today is three news topics. I'm going to be talking about Alan Davis. I'm going to be talking about Equifax, and I'm going to be talking about the iPhone 10. And then after that, uh, I'm going to answer some questions and answers. So in the meantime, feel free to participate, leave some reactions, leave some comments, um, or if you have any questions related to video, photo, martial arts, social media, or anything you think that uh, I could answer and other people might want to know the answer to, you know, feel free to just ask a question at any point, and then I'll go through the chat later on. Cool? Cool. All right, let's get right into it. The first thing I want to talk about is Alan. Uh, for those of you that don't know Alan Davies, or Davis, um, is, it's actually Alan Davis, but everybody calls him Alan Davies because of the E. E's silent. Alan is a phenomenal martial artist and a phenomenal person. Um, he recently won on stage at the U.S. Open, and um, besides being a phenomenal athlete, Alan is... Um, He's just a he's just a good person. Like he just lifts everybody up that he's around. Um, he is inspirational. He's happy. He's outgoing. Um, he helps other people, and he's open minded. Um, the reason why Alan has achieved success so fast is a lot to do with his attitude. And the reason why I'm talking about Alan today, if you don't know, and I'm sure most of you following me are, are aware of this, Alan. Um, I think as early as last week, he was diagnosed with cancer. Um, he's a 17-year-old kid. No 17-year-old should have cancer. And uh, it's obviously, you know, it's it's scary. Uh, I'll just be real. It's scary anytime you get diagnosed with cancer. But uh, what I want to talk about with Alan is two things. Um, uh, first of all, just an update. Um, it, it was a It's a type of cancer that deals with your, lymph no, uh, your lymphatic system. Um, I believe it doesn't is cell, uh, saliva glands, the glands that create uh, saliva, so basically in your throat. Um, and I, I believe he caught it really early. They had surgery, and um, I think he's I think he's okay. Uh, he at, at least who knows, right? Um, we're all kind of on edge, and I know he is too. And I know he has a lot of people that are out there thinking about him, um, including myself. Um, but what I what I wanted to commend Alan on is that. He he uh, presented the news to the world in a really um, upbeat and positive way, and uh, it, it was like I was struck uh, by how inspiring his attitude has been through this whole thing. And I know I wasn't the only one. In fact, um, his inspiration, the way he took such a negative and he turned it into a positive, has really sparked this. Um, this whole wave, this tidal wave of positivity in the in the martial arts world that I live in, and um, it's just inspiring. There's been this new movement called the Dear Allen movement, and I've been seeing posts about it where martial artists, um, competitors, trickers, martial arts teams, um, they're posting videos of support for him, and it's just really powerful, and it's really cool to see. So I, I wanted to um, commend Allen on being strong and um, bringing everybody together through... Um, a really bad thing. He turned a really bad thing into a positive thing. So hopefully, um, uh, you know, everything's going to be fine. I'm not even going to say hopefully. I know everything's going to be fine. So um, cheers to you, Alan. Like, you're, you're an inspiration, and um, keep it up, dude. Okay, Whew. got the emotional stuff out of the way. So the next thing I want to talk about is, like, a super I, – I mean, if cancer was bad, this one is – I, I don't know how to spin this one into a positive one. It's it's uh it's about the Equifax thing, um, and the only reason I'm talking about it because normally what I would ever want to talk about is either related to video or photography or, or martial arts or, or social media or something in that world. Like that's pretty much where I live. Um, but this thing applies to everybody, and I feel like it's not being talked about enough. And uh, I just want to do my part. I feel obligated to kind of like just talk about it a little bit because everybody needs to know about this. 
Um, and I know that I have different age ranges of people watching this. So you probably, some of you might not even know what Equifax is and some of you do. So bear with me for those of you that know what's going on. Uh, I just need to explain it real quick. Equifax is one of, I believe, three companies out there that, that are basically responsible for creating your credit score. Um, and your credit score is the thing you need to get loans. It's the thing you need to get a car. It's the thing you need to find a, a place to live, uh, whether it's renting an apartment or buying a house. Um, it's, it's vitally important um, in today's world to uh, either have a good credit score or no credit score. Basically, you don't want a bad credit score because bad credit scores um, make life very challenging. And so this number is super important. And there's only three companies out there that really um, are responsible for figuring out what this magical number is. And Equifax is one of them. Equifax was recently hacked. Now, in order for Equifax and these other companies to know uh, what your credit score is, they have to know everything about you. They have to know your name, where you live, um, where all the other places you've ever lived, uh, how much money you make, um, how many credit cards you have, what those credit card numbers are, um, and your social security number. And the breach was huge. The, the hack basically, it, it, you can just assume that you've been hacked. If you have a credit card, uh, which, is, which is pretty much most people in America, they, this has affected you. And your information is now out there for sure on the black market on a massive scale. Um, so how is this going to impact you? Well, chances are in the very close range future, you're probably okay. Just the sheer number of people that have been affected, there's just no way for them to attack everybody all at once um, to steal your identity. But stealing your identity has never been easier. Um, what you do need to look out for, though, is in the future because those numbers uh, are attached to you for your whole life. So now that they're out there, um, and let's say you, you become a target, maybe you actually end up being wealthy or, or um, you, you, you become known and people want to get your information. Well, there's bad guys out there that can go find it now and they, people will pay money to get it and it's easier than ever. So uh, what can you do about it? Um, I'm not a financial expert, so I'm not going to give you financial advice on it. I just want to really let you know that this problem exists and it's real. And you really need to go online and kind of learn about it. Personally, based off the research that I've found, what I'm going to be doing is freezing my credit line. And uh, that will make one extra measure. It's a little bit more difficult to have my identity stolen. Um, on a more broad scale, we would also need to look out for the fact that not only was my identity stolen, your identity stolen, our neighbor's identity stolen, but so was every American, including people that are highly uh, important. So that includes everybody that works for the FBI, the NSA, people that work at the White House, like people that live in America and have credit, their identities are up for grabs to the highest bidder. And that's really dangerous. Um, so I don't know what's going to be a result of that, um, but... Hacking has entered a new world, and uh, we should just be prepared. And, and also, it's it's obvious to me that this Equifax thing is not an anomaly. It's not gonna. It's not the first time that um, all of our stuff is going to be hacked. This is just this is just now. It's going to happen again. It's going to happen more and more and more. And so we're entering a new world where people can easily take your stuff. I mean, obviously they could already find stuff about you on Facebook, but now in combination with knowing your social security number and all and anything you've ever held private, you mash all that together, like you're very vulnerable. So what you always need to do is protect yourself. Protect yourself at all times. And consider life as a fight. You know, being online is like being a martial artist. So just protect yourself. Learn how to defend yourself uh, in all ways and uh, digitally as well. So. Go Google Equifax, the Equifax hack, whatever you want to look up. Um, I'm sure if you just look up Equifax, you'll learn about it. So, all right, I've done my public service talking about Equifax. Uh, let's talk about something more fun. I want to talk about the iPhone 10. Woo! Uh, iPhone 10 is uh, the new phone. You guys probably heard about it. 
Um, and it's, uh, it's cool, right? I mean, I, what, what do you guys think about it? I'm not checking the comments right here. Maybe I should be checking the comments. I know there's some people listening here. So if you guys are listening, please just react. I want to know. Uh, what do you think about uh, the iPhone? Um, I'm going to tell you what I think. I think it's um, super cool. And for those of you that don't know, basically this is what it does. The iPhone X is, uh, it basically replaces this Touch ID button with now a Face ID. So there's going to be a screen or a, a series of camera sensors up here. It's going to digitally scan your face. It's going to figure out if it's you. If it's you, your phone unlocks. Boom. Um, so the potential of the technology is that you pick up your phone and you have access to it, you know, instantly. You don't have to do this. It's just, it works for you. It doesn't work for someone else. So that's the potential of it. The, act, the actual application of it, we have yet to see how advanced this Face ID technology is. My assumption is that it's not quite there yet. It will be better in future iPhones. And this iPhone, it's going to be a little slow. I think what's going to happen is you're going to go like this. And you're going to, and then it's going to unlock. And uh, that's actually a lot slower and more cumbersome than just doing that. But uh, it is the future, and that's the way we're heading. So I think it's fine. Um, I'm excited for that. It's cool. Is it worth the upgrade? For me personally, um, no, I'm not. Because I have I have the 6S Plus, and uh, it has you know the max out of 128 gigs. I think that's as big as it came at the time. And um, I'm actually one month away from paying for it. So as soon as I pay for this off, like I own this phone and now I don't have phone payments anymore. So I'm not ready just to jump back on phone payments for no reason because this phone still works. By the way, I've had it for over two years and no case. I don't use a case. You can you can take care of your stuff without a case. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm just I'm gonna just live a life of without a cell phone payment for a while. So that's what I recommend people do. Don't just jump on and buy the new thing because it's new and hot. Like really consider it if it's the right thing for your life. Um, there's always going to be that next phone that comes out, right? So if you always just buy the new thing all the time, then all you're really doing is just you're, you're buying a hype more than you're buying a tool. Um, so that's my thoughts on that. So next thing I want to do is talk about, um, I want to talk about the, the questions and answers you guys have. Uh, earlier today before I started this live feed because I wasn't sure who was going to tune in, um, I just kind of threw it out there and, and wanted to see if anybody had any questions at all. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, we're going to take a look at these real quick. So here are the here are the questions here. Um, the first one is by uh, Chrissy, and she asks, what visuals attract people? For kids, for adults, for teens, I'm tired of stock images. I'm a photographer, but rather than me doing research and having the time to edit gazillion photos for trial and ad campaigns, I want to hear your answer. OK. so. Um, just to answer the first question, what visuals attract people? The the number one thing that attracts people is other people. Um, people are emotionally driven to do things. So um, the most emotional thing that you can post is someone's face. The face is the thing that, that gives emotions. And you also have to remember that most people are watching Facebook through their phones. So they're little tiny screens. So you want to get up close and you want to fill the frame, right? So in fact, let me, um, let me fill my own frame here, right? So you want this whole frame to have a face. Like if this was a Facebook ad, this is a lot better Facebook ad than if, than if I did this where it's like far away, right? Um, so the first thing I say is just, you know, find something emotional, something that strikes emotion. The second thing I would look for when I do Facebook ads in particular is try to blend in. Don't try to feel like an ad. Remember why people are on Facebook. People are not on Facebook to see your ad. People are on Facebook to see what their friends and family are up to and see their pictures. Most of your friends and family are not professional photographers and they don't know how to take the best pictures. So when you have some sort of like exceptional really great, well done photo pop out at you, um, it kind of sticks out like a sore thumb. And all of a sudden it's like, oh, that's an ad. That's not, that's not me. That's just in my way, right? So instead what you might want to do is kind of just 
find the bar, find like the average level, like the average quality of a post, and then just go like a little bit above it. Don't go over the top. Don't try to be Apple. Don't try to make a billboard. Just kind of, um, just make your picture just really nice. So that's my advice with the visuals. I mean, there's a lot more that can be said. Like you can talk about framing, you can talk about contrast, you can talk about um, composition, you can talk about, uh, you know, how much text is on the image, all that kind of stuff. But for now, what you really want to focus on is, is the emotional aspect of it. Um, and one more thing about the emotional aspect, this is just for everybody that's trying to figure out how to like engage with social media a little bit more. I know there's a lot of school owners that, that post stuff and they talk about like, you know, uh, right now I'm doing a $99 special and they have a, a stock photo of like a kid that's not even at their school. And it's like, that's not the way to go about it. Um, what you want to do when you create text for your uh, images is is like think of an emoji, right? So um, let's say I have a, a photo of a kid doing a sidekick. Um, now the next thing to do is think about an emoji. So I'm going to pick a really weird emoji right now. I'm going to uh, unicorn, okay? So the unicorn emoji, wh what does a unicorn represent? A uni unicorn represents like fantasy, it represents um, happiness, it represents magical, um, it just represents like fun, right? So instead of saying anything with the word unicorn in your post, just have the unicorn thought in your mind when you look at this photo of a sidekick and talk about it um, with that mindset. So maybe the photo is, is it's magical when a kid with no confidence that was never accepted onto the football team turns out to be um, an honorable student black belt with uh, a sidekick like this, you know, like suddenly your photo isn't like, Hey, come try karate, uh, which has no emotion in it. The, the, the photo is like, it's emotional. You're like, wow, like look at the transformation of this kid that emotion is really what's going to sell your story as a martial artist, as a school. Um, that's what people want. You know, people want people. So be a person, be a human being. Don't try to, don't try to be like a salesy business person like everybody else is being. Cause that's, if you do the same thing as everybody else, like you're just going to be everybody else and everybody else is not doing it right. <laughs> okay. All right, cool. So that's what I thought. Um, but I also noticed that Chris Pirelli here, let's, let's jump back over here. Chris Pirelli actually answered this question himself and, um, I really respect what he has to say. He's a martial arts video guru. Um, he's a martial artist, and he lives for video, and he's very passionate about what he does, so I'm interested to see what he says. Uh, Chris Pirelli says, visuals that attract people, depending on the person. Adults are attracted to what we have found, other normal people, not chiseled, rock hard, people that look like them. Smiles work a lot for kids. Parents are buying for kids, so parents looking for kids. Safety, fun, community smiles. Um, yeah, so he's saying very similar to what I'm saying, um, not the chiseled rock hard people that look like them, right? You don't want a photo of the supermodel. You don't want a photo of like somebody that like stands out and you're like, what is this? This isn't me. This doesn't relate to me. You want the average look. You want the average something relatable, something that fits in the feed. As somebody scrolling through in a perfect world, you want to scroll through and, and they don't want you to, they don't want to even register that they're looking at an ad. So there you go. Um, there's some ideas for you and smiles work a lot. That goes back to the idea that emotions, you can invoke emotions. And the number one way to invoke emotions is, is smiling. When you smile, like people are psychologically, like they have to smile back when they look at some, like when they see a smile. So there's a lot of power in smiles. Okay, cool. All right. So let's see another question here. Um, any recommendations on video editing software? Uh, so I asked him back, which device is he talking about? Is he talking about uh, Mac? Is he talking about the iOS, Android, or PC? And uh, he's, he's particularly asking about Mac and iOS right now, which is great because I am obviously, uh, as I showed you the iPhone earlier, I'm all about Mac, I'm all about iOS. So I don't really use PC, I don't really use Android, so I don't have an educated answer on that. Um, aside from Premiere, but I'll get to that in a second. Um, the first thing I just wanna mention when it comes to video editing software, you can get away with uh, just about any video editing software these days. They'll all do, they'll all create videos for you. 
Um, and actually, there is some negative there is some negative sides to jumping into a really advanced video editing software if you aren't an advanced videographer or a video editor. It's going to make it more complicated. So if you're new or you're novice or you don't do it pro professionally, then I recommend getting something simple so that the time and effort of creating videos is effortless, right? So um, he says that he's using iMovie. iMovie's awesome. Personally, I, I, I do video editing professionally, and um, I need a lot more tools than what iMovie offers me. So I never, ever, ever, ever use iMovie. But I know that there are YouTubers out there that have literally millions. There are some YouTubers out there that have millions of subscribers, and all they ever use is iMovie. So iMovie totally works. Um, Final Cut Pro works. I, I think it's just one of those things you got to explore and, and find find the thing that's free and easy and just go with it. And then once you have like gone beyond the scope, like you need more tools, well, then you, by that point, you'll know, right? You'll know what you need, and then you'll know what to look for for the next step. So start small, start simple, start cheap, easy, free. And uh, don't let the software like hinder you from getting the results you want. I mean... I've actually edited quite a number of videos right off my phone. Um, if you use the iMovie app, I have used iMovie on my iPhone, and it works awesome. I love it. And uh, there's a new there's a new software built into iOS now called Clips. It's really cool. Super easy to make a story. Um, everybody that has an iPhone has this app, and if you don't, you can download it for free off the App Store. Um, and, and I don't know how Android is, but I'm sure Android has the same thing going on. They have they have the equal number of, of options and editing videos is really easy today if you don't try to overcomplicate things. Cool? So hopefully that helps you out, Jeremy. Um, awesome. So next question, how often uh, should you post on business, Facebook, and Instagram? Um, well, that is the, uh, the golden question, right? Um, it's not fair to give you a, a solid number um, because that's not how it works. Um, Facebook and Instagram are social media platforms to build communities and to um, increase engagement and, and build relationships. That's the focus, and that's what you should focus on with these platforms. Um, personally, uh, with the social media accounts that I work for, I prefer I primarily focus on Hyper, at HyperMA every single day. Um, whenever you see a post go up on Hyper, 99% uh, of the time, that was me doing the post. And right now, I'm averaging, and, and like, if you ever want to know how often to post, go look at the most popular platform or the most popular channels or the channels you want to be like and see how often they're posting and, and then start there. And so for us, for Hyper, we post zero to three times per day, typically uh, – one or two times per day, sometimes three on, a, on some days and sometimes zero on other days. Um, and, and, and I've just found through experimentation, uh, sometimes posting seven times in the day, sometimes not posting for several days at all. Like That's just like the number that kind of works for our audience. And, and I use insights and I just look at the numbers and I just figure it out as I go. So that's kind of what you have to do as well. Um, if you go look at Apple, if you go look at uh, Nike, their Instagram channels, like Nike doesn't post every day. They post once every couple days. Sometimes they'll post once a day, but sometimes they'll post once a week. Like they, they're not very like, they don't post like all the time. Um, and they have huge engagement. But meanwhile, uh, then there's a, a magazine that I follow called Complex and they post like every hour, if not more often. Like they, there's no, there's no hard fast rule about how often you're supposed to post. But I will say that consistency is important. So if you only post once a week, then just keep posting once a week and then maybe experiment with twice a week or three times a week. But don't go from once a week to five times in an hour and then back to once a week. Um, you know, Just kind of be at a steady rate and then vary it a little bit. Okay, cool. Um, and, and you're also going to find that interactions on Facebook and Instagram and the number of posts are going to be different. And that has to do with the uh, that has to do with like the algorithm, and the algorithm is always changing. So don't adapt, don't get too too strong and like stuck on like 
I need to post three times a day and that's it because tomorrow Instagram algorithm is going to change on you and that three times a day isn't going to work anymore and you have to figure something else out. But uh, ultimately it's just about building the, the relationships. You just want to post stuff that when it's out there, people go like, I can resonate with that. I like that. I agree with that. I want to communicate back to you. Cool. All right, cool. Um, so that is, uh, I think I'm going to wrap up my live stream here and, uh, I think this was fun and wait one second here before I go, I just want to see, oh, hold on. You know what? I'm confusing myself because I am talking, I'm listening to my own live stream. Oh man, look at all these comments. Hey, 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 hi, 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 what's up? Oh yeah, so let's do some shout outs here. Gab, Jose, Rob, Bonnie. Oh, Nathan, Urban Tricks. What's up, dude? I can't wait to actually meet you someday. Pamela, Mr. Palmer, Yusuf was on here. James Person was on here, Riley. Sweet. Um, Scotty's got a question here. He says, uh, you mentioned engagement is key. How do I get people to initially engage and stay engaged? Uh, ask a question. Like, uh, go go look on my per my personal Facebook page and look at the um, co the, the posts I make that get a ton of people um, commenting. And usually, what I do is I ask something that's simple, not controversial, and just you know easy to talk about. Uh, sometimes I talk about like, there, let's let me just look at my profile right now because it's, uh, um, I had some crazy engagement recently uh, and I just don't remember offhand because I'm being put on the spot. Um, where is it? Oh, all right. Well, he, here's, here's one that got crazy engagement. I mean, speaking of Alan, right, let's talk about this. Now, obviously, I didn't make this post to get engagement. That wasn't my my purpose. But it's got like 120 likes. That's a lot of that's a lot of interactions for me. And you know, it was heartfelt. It was real. So you want to be you want to get engaged. Like be real. Don't try to um, sell somebody right away. So that that's what I have to say about that. Um, where was another one? What's got a lot of engagement here? Oh, here. So I said, let's rename Extreme Forms to the Epic Fight Against Invisible, Invisible Ninjas Division, right? I was just being silly. Um, <coughs> sorry, sorry about that. I, I mean, I got 134 people, like everybody's going crazy um, over that because it's just a simple, fun, silly idea. I'm not trying to be like, hey, go do this and hey, go do that because every time I try to say, hey, go do this or go do that, people are just like phased out. But if you can just create a fun conversation for people to get involved with like that's semi-related to what you're actually trying to talk about cool like I love martial arts so I just made a post about martial arts and and like that was it cool all right let me see uh, let me tune back in here I want to check to see if there's any more live feeds I'm still trying to figure out how to actually read the comments because I don't like watching myself on the live feed because it's just distracting looking at my own face so I actually tune the tune it out uh, let me see here yeah if you guys have any more questions feel free to ask oh you know what I I changed my mind um, if you have any more questions I'll just get them on the next one I've already been talking for over an hour and that is a pretty long time for a live stream so if you guys uh, paid attention and you made it this far um, just I want you to put an emoji like a fist emoji just go Put, leave that as a comment. Let me know that you actually made it this far into the live stream because that's pretty awesome. Um, and if you like this, you know, let me know. You can send me a private message if you're not comfortable posting it publicly um, or don't post anything at all, whatever. Um, I'm just playing with this, kind of teaching myself about live stream and social media and uh, Facebook because it's always a game that you never really master. Cool? All right, that's it, guys. I'm out. Hope you guys have a good day. See ya.